Moonshot Radio with your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director for the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today here in the studio, Dr. Fran Adams, retired superintendent of the school district of Indian River County, and Barbara Hammond, CEO and co-founder of the Learning Alliance. Ladies, thank you for joining me today. Our pleasure. Thank you. Fran, I want to start with you. Could you share with us a little bit about how the Moonshot Literacy Movement started eight years ago? Okay. I I love talking about the Moonshot uh, moment. And I'm not sure whether everybody knows that the very first thing that happened was there were two mothers that came to visit me in my office. And they came to visit me because they had children who who were struggling readers. And those two mothers were Barbara Hammond and Liz Woody. And that was the very beginning mm-hmm. of a wonderful partnership all these years. The learning, and that was about 2008. I think it was about 2008. 2000, yeah. And then uh, 2009, the Learning Alliance was established. And um, from there, 2010, that was really a big moment because we established the Moonshot Goal. Mm-hmm. And the Moonshot Goal, and I always like to tell people a little bit about Moonshot. Where did that come from? Mm-hmm. And we used John F. Kennedy's speech about going to the moon and committing the nation committing to go to the moon and bringing a man back safely. And the power of that is, is there was no blueprint on how to do that. Mm -hmm. Because you see, when he announced that in 1961, we hadn't even put a man in orbit yet. So it took Apollo 8, 9, and 10 before we were even able to get Apollo 11 off the ground. And that was our nation's moonshot moment. And that's where we came from, our community's moonshot moment. And it was really born out of this idea that there's no plan. There's no, it's a complex problem, but there is no blueprint or plan on how to do it. So that's when we began in 2011 with the moonshot goal. Fran, really such an ambitious goal and connecting it to this, that significance and that role in history for all of us. That's certainly very interesting. I don't think a lot of people are are aware of that. Barbara, could you share with us a little bit about the Learning Alliance's role in the Moonshot Literacy Movement? Yeah, so as Fran said, the Learning Alliance really started from the hearts of two moms that were breaking because our kids were failing kindergarten. And we had resources to help our children and in searching for solutions. um, For them, we realized that we have a huge national problem. Mm -hmm. Only 35% of the kids in the United States of America are reading on grade level by third grade. And uh, Ray Oglethorpe, former president of AOL, you know, joined forces with us very early on, and he called that our little-known national shame. Mm. Our businesses need 90% of our kids to be reading on grade level, which is way up from when I was you know, younger, where we only needed two out of 10 kids to have that level mm. of literacy. So it's a challenge to our communities and to our schools. And the Learning Alliance's role from the beginning has been one of inquiry. What does it take to create literate, creative, compassionate citizens, you know, who can improve our world? And we know businesses need that level of skill. And when we did the research, we realized that um, it's almost over by third grade. Only one in six kids succeed after third grade. And if you come from a family with some means, you can hire tutors and catch your kids up. But um, 68% of our kids in this county in third grade, um, I guess it's down to 65% now, was at 68% a year ago, are coming from economic disadvantage. Um, So we know that for our community to unlock the potential of our citizens, um, we have to figure out how to educate them earlier on. So the Learning Alliance's role has always been put the kid at the center and bring community partners together to say, how do we solve this problem? As Fran says, there is no blueprint. So the Learning Alliance is um, a catalyst to build um, community transformation. We're really trying to change the culture, which starts at birth. Um, And then once kids get into kindergarten, what is the culture within our schools? 
to help catch kids up who are coming in, you know, frequently behind. And instead of needing a year of growth at school, we're finding kids need a year and a half to a year and three quarters. And that means our schools need our help, our funding and programs after school, summer, and during the school day to help catch them up. So um, the Learning Alliance role is really to say, what does it take and get people to align behind it and bring their great skills to action against it. And generating that momentum, Barbara, that you describe in that partnership is very important. So I wanna ask you, Fran, as a former superintendent, what do you think is the connection, the role that a school district plays in this movement? And why is it important to have the school district and local organizations really rally around this moonshot? Well, moment? you know, for one thing, we have 5,000 ch children in kindergarten through third grade. So we have the vast majority of children that need to be reading on grade level by third grade. Mm. And so uh, when the uh, Learning Alliance came to us, they, they, were, they were there to say, how can we help you? How can we support you? Uh, they weren't there to give us all the answers and the solutions, but uh, they came to be a partner. And early on, we learned, and we actually had the author of the book, Schools Can't Do It Alone, come to mm -hmm. us and talk to us. And, and uh, he even told us at that time that this is the first time in history that our nation has to have every child reaching their potential. The very security and the health of our nation relies on high literacy rates. And so as schools, we need to reach out to those people in our community that are willing to support us. And this is a very special community. Uh, they help people in a variety of ways. And there has never been shame and blame, and there has always been support. And schools need that. They have a monumental job. And uh, we are very fortunate to live in a community that supports children. And that certainly makes a difference, that partnership. So, Barbara, I want to ask you, what specific programs do you have in conjunction with the school district to benefit the children and the families here in Indian River County? Well, so again, we, um, the Learning Alliance has brought a discipline called emergent learning into the community. And that's the idea that we learn by doing, and the answers, the blueprint arises out of the work. And what we have breakdowns and breakthroughs, and we try to share that learning across all systems. So our program, we have an early literacy model, which has emerged, and the early literacy model starts with how do you bring the community into the room, the community leaders, and what knowledge and skills and practices do they need to increase the amount of innovations going in um, birth to nine, and that's our Moonshot Community Action Network. So we are the backbone support um, for that and for training community leaders and how to move from silos to collaborative action to collective impact. Um, we also have programs, teacher professional development programs. Um, what, what are the early literacy skills? What's the knowledge, the skills, and practices that teachers need to have in the classroom and for kids who are struggling? And when it breaks down, what should they do? So we've done a ton of work around that, and we offer um, certifications and professional development workshops um, to our teachers. Um, here in Indian River County. And um, the third piece um, is our extended learning programs, right? School, a school year is not sufficient to give the types of growth that I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. If you're trying to get well over a year of growth, um, you have to look after school. You have to look during the summer. And um, our kids got tutored during the day at the, at the schools they were in. So we we're also bringing in interventionists during the school day to help supplement what the teachers are trying to accomplish in the, in the classroom. So those extended learning programs are something that the school district really cares about because um, right now we've got 56% of our kids reading on grade level. To get to 90%, kids need more time on task, well-structured. And the extended learning programs are um, programs that really help supplement school district funds, which are limited in what they can do. And Barbara, I want to ask you, some of us have seen around town a rocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you talk about programs yeah. and initiatives, could you share with us a little bit about what the rocket is all about? Yeah, so the Moonshot Rocket, I mean, it grew out of a dream. We've been talking since our inception about wouldn't it be cool <laughs> to have a bus that was turned into a rocket that would drive around the streets. And, um, you know, what emerged out of the work was an opportunity to take an old school bus and... Um, paint it up, moonshot moment, and it goes around. We hired a arts literacy educator from one of our schools, Bridget Lyons, um, who did work at Indian River Academy, and um, she's phenomenal. And she's a little entrepreneur who takes the rocket around and creates customized engagements 
all over Indian River County. Yeah. Whether it could be a public housing project, she might go in with the police. It could be um, a park and a and a community event. It could be something um, at the Environmental Learning Center. It could be at a BPK classroom at Head Start. It could be at a school. So based on demand, she's done over 350 engagements um, in um, the last uh, 18 months, and. Um, it's also gone national. It's, uh, it's traveled um, twice now to the national campaign for grade level reading and stopped at award winning communities along the way. So Indian River County has been named a pace setter for many years now, um, leading this work. And the Moonshot Rocket has stopped and done engagements at other award winning communities to try to raise up that the Moonshot moment isn't just a local phenomenon. Right. It's something that we are trying to create a model here that the nation and other communities who are doing innovative work can join so that all of our kids across the United States are reading on grade level by third grade. So the rocket has gone national and <laughs> national. when we see the rocket, just just wave to the rocket. This is a good thing and we're certainly supporting literacy. Right. We're gonna take a break to hear from our sponsors and we will be right back with Moonshot Radio. For more than 160 years, PNC has been committed to providing their clients with great service and powerful financial expertise to help them meet their financial goals. The PNC Foundation, which receives its principal funding from the PNC Financial Services Group, actively supports organizations that provide services for the benefit of communities in which it has significant presence. The foundation focuses its philanthropic mission on early childhood education and community and economic development, which includes arts and culture. Through Grow Up Great, its signature cause that began in 2004, PNC has created a bilingual 350 million multi-year initiative to help prepare children from birth to age five for success in school and life. For more information, go to pncgrowupgreat.com. Hurry, Joey. I want to get there early to get the best stuff. But we have to go to another garage sale. You do know there's a better way. You can get phenomenal stuff and great deals on almost everything at our Habitat Restore. Hey, isn't that where you got your office desk? Find great stuff at the renovated and expanded Indian River Habitat Restore on US 1, just north of 45th Street. Open Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6. Donations of gently used stuff is always appreciated. Shop, donate, volunteer. Habitat Restore is a nonprofit. Recycling plastic bottles, jugs, and containers is a good thing. But thin plastic wraps, plastic shopping bags, and hoses should never be placed in your recycling cart. Why? When our recyclables are sent to the material recovery facility, these items get jammed up in the machinery and need to be cut loose. So instead, throw hoses and thin plastic wraps in the garbage and return plastic shopping bags to a collection bin at a local grocery store. To learn more about recycling in Indian River County, visit us at ircrecycles.com. To Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative. And joining me today in the studio are Dr. Fran Adams, retired superintendent for the School District of Indian River County, and Barbara Hannon, CEO and co-founder of the Learning Alliance. Fran, I want to ask you, why does literacy start at birth? I can think of 100 billion reasons, because you see, a child is born with 100 billion neurons in their brain. And there's a research now that says the first thousand days of a child's life is the most important. Mm. And the reason it is, is because every second of that first 1,000 days, there's 100 neurons making connections. And these connections are really what set the foundation for thinking, um, social skills, communication, and setting up the reading brain. So it's a very critical time. And also from birth, there are some things that a child has to have. One is stimulation. Mm. We talk about playing, singing, rhyming, reading. All of those things are important. Another thing they need from birth is good nutrition. They, I, I just recently read that 50 to 75 percent of all the energy absorbed from food and that goes to the brain in those early years, in that first thousand days. 
And the first thousand days is until about three, three years old. And then they also need protection. Mm. They need protection from abuse, from neglect, and from traumatic experiences during that time. Because we know from research, again, all the neuroscience that has happened in the last 10 years gives us so much more information that toxic stress can actually limit those connections. Mm. So that first thousand days, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? are the critical time that sets the very foundation for what happens after that. So uh, there are lots of things that we can do. The other thing is the, there is no typical American family today, but the majority of working parents work outside the home and they have to have care for their child. So high quality child care is another really, really important thing. There are about 12 million children every day under five years old that go somewhere that we hope are getting a loving adult <laughs> and getting that stimulation that they need. So we should never ever underestimate how critical those early years from birth to fifth grade or four to uh, age five. And that's why we started the Kindergarten Readiness Coalition. That's why our Moonshot Community Action has people in it that are working on those very years. But um, it's very, very important, and I think it's important for our community and every mother and father to really have that information. Um, I didn't have that information. Mm. Thankfully, I was enjoyed doing those things, but every mother and father wants their child to be successful, and this is setting the foundation for later success. Fran, that's such an important statement. If you're a parent, a grandparent, a caregiver, know that literacy starts very early on before a child enters a formal school setting. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if they don't get that, there's what's called a 30 million word gap. Uh, yep. I think it's 30 million. And that means that very often children that come from underprivileged families or come from poverty don't hear the same number of words. So they actually start kindergarten with a 30 million gap. And so it makes it more difficult for that child to catch up uh, if they're not ready for kindergarten. So, Barbara, following on that premise that Fran has shared, why then does third grade reading matter? Why is, should that be important to us? Um, Really, third grade is the point of transformation. So if you think about it, children learn to read um, until third grade. After third grade, they are expected to read to learn. Mm. So children who haven't learned to read well by third grade get um, increasingly struggle academically. It turns into social, emotional anxiety and struggles and discipline problems. If you look at the um, statistics, um, 85% of um, unwed mothers and 70% um, of those in uh, prison populations and in juvenile delinquency programs and similar percentages for those on welfare um, all suffer from high levels of, um, of, liter of lack of literacy. So we know that third grade, it's not just academic trouble, it turns to social, emotional, and, and societal um, trouble, which personally is a loss to the child and the family and then to the community leads to lots of social costs later on. So there's been, I think when we started it and we actually declared the moonshot moment goal, it was sort of um, two moms and a philanthropist who said third grade mattered because of the research we did. And then after um, Fran declared the goal, within three months, a national campaign launched where they had done their extensive okay. research and they found that third grade is the turning point. If you look at all economic development going on, I just spoke at Main Street the other day, which is the urban development for um, Indian River County and across Florida. And they say the most important issue that they are looking at is um, how do they revive the economic vitality of their communities? And the number one thing that the Chamber of Commerce within um, Florida and um, all of the urban developers and leading national economists say is it's about um, talent um, development. And so really, how do we create talent? And what we know from our work is that we have to do it before third grade. Um, so third grade becomes critically important. And I think when we started our work, we thought, oh, this is a simple problem. We'll <laughs> give teachers some access to best practice teaching strategies and, you know, we'll all mm -hmm. be done. And what the community has learned is it starts, you know, even before birth um, and that um, 
you know, reading is really predicated on two things. There's a code to our language, and 88% of our words are decodable if kids are taught the code. They tend to be taught the code in school, in kindergarten through third grade, and it has to be taught well. Mm. And be, But besides that, they have to have um, word and language comprehension. So the what Fran talked about is kids, if they are spoken to, talked to, sung to before they enter school, 50% of their ability to succeed K through three is predicated upon how well they can manipulate words and speak and have conversations. And if kids aren't spoken to a lot, and technology is getting in the way now too, right? Um, they come to school with such deficits that really challenge our um, classroom teachers and the good instruction. Um, so that was a big aha for all mm -hmm. of us, that it's, it's comprehension, oral language comprehension, the ability to speak well, play with our rhymes, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, Humpty Dumpty, you name it. Um, how important that is for a kid to succeed learning to put sound to print and to be able to read successfully by third grade. So Barbara, you're describing a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. And Fran, I understand that there's a group that is working around this complex issue called MCAN. Could right. you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, if I go back a little bit, a couple years, we started out as community literacy leaders, and that was really when we set the moonshot goal. And the community began to rally around that goal and come together, and we would, uh, they would talk about some of the things that they're doing. I mean, the community got involved. Two years after that, we said we need to up our own uh, level in the uh, community literacy leaders. We have to become the community leader ourselves, we need to understand and, and take our level of knowledge up. So we call ourselves the Moonshot Community Action um, Network. Network. And it's made up of a diverse group mm. of people in the community. It's made up of nonprofits, some business. There are about um, 70 business partners that are not just business partners, 70 different organizations that are part of MCAN. We come together once a month and our goal in MCAN, we have a common goal, and our common goal is to get children reading by the end of third grade on grade level. So that's the ultimate goal. But we understand as a community that that's not going to happen unless that we look at the whole picture. And we've actually created a playing field um, because Ralph Smith from the National uh, Campaign for Grade Level Reading always tells us you got to get off the bleachers and out into the playing field. So we've created a playing field in our community, and we challenge the community to come and join us because we have got to change the culture within our community so everybody understands how important this is. So if every business, every classroom, every nonprofit, every parent understood this, think about what would happen. Our community would be transformed. And that's what, excuse me, that's what MCAN's trying to do. Thank you, Fran. And so before we sign off, Barbara, anything that you'd like to share with folks in the community who'd like to join MCAN? What, um, if they're interested, who should they connect with? Who should they contact? What can we share with them? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously there's so many leaders now involved in co-creating MCAN. That's how it's going to be successful. So they can contact Fran Adams. They can contact me. They can contact you. They can contact Marie O'Brien. Pretty much, um, you know, we could we could send out um, some information if people come in here. Um, but anyway, we do meet monthly, and um, we have a meeting tomorrow morning actually, right. and we're planning for a summit. Um, October is 31st. it? October thirty first mm -hmm. will be a summit that we're inviting the entire community to to understand and get involved with what they can do to align and so that it's helpful to all of us. But I would like to thank um, there are philanthropists in this town. Um, Ray Oglethorpe, who's the former chairman of AOL, who have put a lot of money, millions of dollars into this effort to support all of this work. Mm -hmm. We live in a very special community. Absolutely. Thank you both for joining me. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. <laughs>